So hello, my name is Stephen Goldberg of Optimus Performance, and I'm here uh, in Austin, Texas at the Profiles International World Conference, and I have with me Tim Brennan, uh, the President CEO, I'm not sure quite what your title the, is, the founder? Yeah, <laughs> co-founder. Uh, co-founder, all right, of Hiring Smart, a uh, Canadian-based company in Halifax, and um, Tim has been a long-time strategic business partner of Profiles. And I'd like to just uh, discuss with you some of the sure. ways that uh, you use these tools in your business and also about how your business solves some of the hiring problems and performance problems because it's all linked together of your clients. Maybe tell me about what are the uh, solutions or the problems that your clients have that you bring solutions with your products? Well, you know, there's really, when I break it all down, there's really three really big things that we constantly hear when we're when we're talking to business leaders uh, either in Canada or the United States um, and it, it all lines back down to people you know it's um, first of all they hired somebody they brought them into their organization and then once they were there they discovered that, that person really wasn't who they thought they were getting or um, the second one would be that they hired someone they spent an awful lot of time effort and resources to train them and then once all the training was done and the person was in place, they left. Probably the most expensive people challenge that they have. Or the third one is they can't find anyone to, to hire. Um, and it would be for a whole bunch of various reasons that it happens. But what happens is in, in the hiring process, they then start hiring them. Well, to be, to be frank, they hire the next person who can start on Monday. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the right fit, but mm -hmm. they got somebody in because having someone in was better than having no one. Right. Yeah, so that, that's what we see as the problems. So up there. what do you bring to the table, or how do you help them solve those issues? And well, um, the hiring smart is not a tool. It's really a process. It's a way of changing the way you think about it. So if you think about the whole, if you, could, if you and I could sit back right now and take out a big piece of paper and say, hey, let's redesign the whole hiring system, and we could make it a whole different way that we brought matching talent in. Um, people and and opportunities together. You know, what would we do? And well, that's what we did at Hiring Smart uh, about ten years ago. We sat down with my business partner Jan Jan Vanderhoop, and and we did that exercise on and at a restaurant with one of those places where they give you the can with the crayons and all the paper, <laughs> and we drew it all out. And and we started yeah, first. Kids' minds. That's right. The that's right. Problems. That's right. And <laughs> and 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 we started at the beginning. And the first thing we saw that in the current traditional hiring system that was a real barrier was the resume. Okay. Um, who in who in your town, for instance, has an updated resume? All right. It's usually the people who are currently unemployed or soon to be unemployed. Okay. <laughs> So we thought, huh, what if we could have a hiring process that didn't use the resume as the first screening tool? Right. So we created an online interview system where candidates can go online, they can learn about a company and what it's like to work there, decide to opt themselves into the process, and any time of the year, whether that company's hiring or not, they can complete an online interview and answer questions that are relevant and important to what matters most for that role. Okay. So that's where now, so from the Profiles International family, yeah. you'll see it, uh, different tools in, for different roles. And yeah. um, that, what, I, what we really, what we very much like about the tools from Profiles is the, how, the ease of how to read them. Mm -hmm. We find that the employers tell us that when they get the interview guides that are generated from the assessments that Profiles provides, that they don't have to um, guess at what it really means. Yeah. They, and they can follow the instructions to the thing. And anybody in the organization, whether they're a trained HR person or whether or not they're um, somebody who's on the front line in a supervisory role and they're hiring for someone for their night shift, yeah. when you hand them the interview guides that can come from those tools, they can be useful and effective. Okay. So by using your process and some of these tools, how uh, effective are they? Like, you, Can you give me some stats? Sure. Or how does it... You know what is saved and what's improved. Well, the, the first thing that happens is you change your gene pool. Yeah. You change the group of the people who are hiring, yeah. who are who are actually applying. Okay. For after all, you know when you think about the resume, and if you tell people that you no longer have to have a resume to apply, you can target those people who are currently employed but slightly disengaged, but not disengaged enough yet that they're out there looking. Mm -hmm. When those people are into the process, then you have a whole different picture to look at. Mm -hmm. 
one of the things that we would like to see more and more companies that we work with do is um, actually take the time to profile their existing people mm -hmm. to understand what fit means in their team. Yeah. Um, if I if I take Create that performance model, well, the print, yeah, but but it also though there's if you think about there's four there's really four big fits you got to think about. Yeah. There's fit with the job, yeah. fit with the manager, okay. fit with the team, and fit with the organization. Okay. Um, you can use different tools and different processes to help you understand all four fits. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, for instance, um, if I want, I could look at the Profile XT or the Profile Sales Assessment as a very good, effective tool for fit with the job. Right. Um, then I could go to the Profiles Managerial Fit Report yeah. and look at fit with the manager. Okay. If I wanted to then understand how they're going to fit in a team, I could move into the Performance, um, performance Indicator tool, the, the PPI. And then using the team analysis report, I can look at fit with the organization. Yeah, I'm realizing how important fit is because yesterday I went uh, shopping for cowboy boots, uh -huh. and they're expensive. You know, they run, and you know, you got to make sure you got the right fit because you're spending a lot of money. And it's kind of like the same thing when we hire an employee. We're spending a lot of time and money, and if we don't get the right fit, it, sometimes it takes six months. Or you know, depending on the job, the complexity of the job, people can hide behind poor performance. And what's the cost of hiring or turnover generally, let's say, at a manager level? Do you have any figure for that? Um, the figures that I have is what the clients will tell me. Okay. And they're not that different than what you've seen study after study. You know, a lot of times it'll be four times the salary of a one, an, a, annual, an salary? annual salary. Really? Would be the, well, when, you, when you're talking management level, yeah. When you're talking management level, that person affects the performance of teams below them. Right. So it isn't just the productivity and the engagement and the effectiveness of that one individual, mm -hmm. but it's also all the people they affect, mm -hmm. as well as the, externally all the customers that they will have touched. Right. So uh, it can be an, in the management role. It just sort of spreads, spreads out, out. Beyond just what we, is obvious, but there's other consequences. Oh, you know. Yeah. We could go into a whole other conversation someday yeah, could. around I mean, around the, um, the the value of the right fit in a middle management yeah. role. You know, I had an interesting experience booking my plane here where I booked with one airline and I wanted to book a second ticket for my partner to come with me the next day and I couldn't process it at the same rate. And I went on you know, to support and spoke to somebody and the experience was horrible. And they even told me that my ticket hadn't been actually paid for, which I thought it was. So I went and I booked on a second airline, and the experience was totally different. The whole customer experience was so different and so much easier. And I ended up with two tickets. I didn't even know it. you know. Wow. And now I have to go back and fight to get a refund or whatever. And I won't mention the name of the airlines at this point, but uh, you know, well, I will at one <laughs> point if I have to uh, fight with them. But it just showed me how important it is to have the right person in the job because it really no. truly affects the customer experience. And, and that's really today uh, often is your leverage over your competition is the experience you're creating. You know, you, you, you bring up a really interesting point because yeah. how many times have we seen in our careers over the last 30 years where someone was a real star in one company? Yeah. And then they got recruited away to another, to the competitor. Yeah. And when they got to the competitor, when they were there, it just didn't work for them. They yeah. didn't deliver what they had delivered elsewhere. Because they didn't fit in one component of what you just Yeah, mentioned. they didn't yeah. fit. You know, and and um, it doesn't matter which one it doesn't fit in. Yeah. But you, know, it's, you have to have all four. And when you have all four, that's when you get the total engagement. Mm -hmm. And if you've got the engagement, that's then when you start seeing your um, your key performance measurements move, mm -hmm. right? Um, like turnover. Turnover is not something that you and I can sit here and say we're going to fix turnover mm -hmm. uh, and on Friday the number is going to get better. The turnover number that you and I are looking at, it's a trailing indicator in business. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it happened because of a series of events done over a long period of time. Sure. Same thing for customer satisfaction. The customer satisfaction issue that you just told me about that airline, mm -hmm. it didn't happen on Friday. No. It's a much it's a bigger cultural, cultural issue. Yeah, for sure. You could feel it because I had the same type of uh, discussion with two different people in the same type of role, and both had the same type of attitude like I was bothering them, you know, and I should have known better, you know, and I was wrong. And they bad, wrong. bad customer. <laughs> yeah. for not, it was your fault because you weren't following the rules. Like, you know, history, you know, companies are trying so hard, even like, 
you talk, you know, you look at the banks and how they're trying to really in, in, in create much a better customer yeah. experience. So. It's funny, you know, it's funny this conversation and starts really moving into what yes. is fit. Yeah. Um, uh, my favorite story is here. We're in Austin, Texas today. Yeah. The last year we were down in. Um, in San Antonio, oh, okay. and when I, I went into the mall, the shopping mall the, the, there, and they had this little booth called Cookies by George, and I watched a woman in front of me, um, they were uh, ordering cookies for a birthday party for her child. There were nine very large chocolate chip cookies in the counter, and the woman says, I need, I, I need all nine, uh, or I need ten of these cookies, but you only have nine. I'll take all nine. The girl behind the counter says to her, oh, I'm really sorry. Um, you can't have them all, but I can sell you eight of them. <laughs> and and I sat back thinking, you know, I can't, you know, this is just this is going to be good. And it, sure enough, the the mother asked, so why can't I have all nine? And the woman behind the counter points to behind her. She says, because it's a rule. I'm not allowed to run out of anything in the display case. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, there's a culture there. Yeah. There's there's fit for you. We got to preserve the look of the store. And, that was and, more important. And, and more that, important than s satisfying the, the well, client. You will find that you know yeah. different companies have different cultures. Yeah. So well, great conversation. We have to go to our next session. Yes. Quickly, any sure. uh, predictions for the coming year? Uh, we're January, beginning of 2013. Any predictions as far as? Uh, uh, trends in the hiring marketplace or gee things um, in that, 2013 uh, companies should be looking out for um, well I, I I I have seen yeah. in the last year yeah. which I expect will continue in the 2013 there's more organizations today now using assessment tools as part of their whole performance management system right. not just hiring but also working with their existing teams it is no longer the new novelty it's no longer the the innovators doing it mm -hmm. it is mainstream now mm -hmm. and what i think we're going to see more and more of now is more companies out there building it into their strategic plans mm -hmm. And if they're not building it in the strategic plans, they're going to be going out to gather the information so they can for the next year because uh, it's not new anymore. Right. So but companies are recognizing that this type of information and data will make them a better company and keep them more uh, competitive and, no. and have better engaged employees because yeah. happier employees that are fit for the job will stay longer and perform better. Well, if I had to summarize it all up in yeah. one sentence, let's say, Life just gets easier right. when you know what matters most for your employees. And, you, and to do that, you need to measure what matters. Okay. Anyways. Thank you very much, Tim. Oh. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, and sir. We enjoy need the rest of the conference. You too.